Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Big Pump. I am the coach of your NPA Season 3 Raw Chester Ride-Ons, guys. I hope you guys are excited as I am for the new season. Um, if you guys don't know me, I was in uh, NPA Season 2. I came in as a substitute coach for Key Darkness Dragon. Uh, I think he was the LA Clef Keys. But anyway, I was a substitute coach for him. We went 3-1. Uh, and one. We lost to A-Drive. And we managed to be in San Vampanese, Horeth, and Miss Snow Bunny. But those were my only four games. We went three and one. Very happy with that. I'm very excited to be back for season three and getting to drop my own team. And this video is going to go over the picks I made, why I made the picks, and how I think we're going to do over the season, as well as uh, kind of go over some synergy that I was thinking of while I drafted the team. And now I'm going to go over my first round pick. Now, before I show you the pick, I'm sure you guys all saw it, but before I go over why I picked it, I went into this draft knowing I was number 17 in the draft, and I knew that the Tapus were not going to fall to me. And I did not really plan on it because, uh, or the Tapus or the UBs, I didn't think they were going to fall to me. And I didn't really want to because if you guys didn't know, the Tapus and the UBs were, except Guzzlord. But they were all S tier 1, meaning that if I picked it, that meant I lost 100 points toward my free picks at the end of the draft. Um, I don't know if you guys really paid attention to that aspect of it. But um, I figured I would get more bang for my buck by getting like a S tier 2 pick. Um, and that way I could kind of use more points in my free draft total. And I thought that would make a more well-rounded team rather than having to go for the bottom of the barrel after picking uh, one of the really, really good mons. So anyway, I'll show you my first round pick, and I think I did an exceptional job of picking this pick. And we went with Kirum freaking Black, one of my favorite Pokemon in the game to use competitively. I think Kirum Black is absolutely amazing. He has amazing stats. He's like base 170 attack, base 120 special attack, great mixed attacker. Run Ice Beam, Outrage, Flash Cannon, Iron Head. Uh, what other stuff does he got here? We got Fusion Bolt for electric coverage. I think he's absolutely insane. Um, the only thing that's a little, um, what is it, Last, lackluster about him is his speed tier. It's base 95, which by in no means is that bad. But it does uh, make him outpaced by things like Garchomp and Salamence, things that could kill him back pretty easily with dragon coverage. But I think the rest of my team will work around that. But I think his stats are absolutely insane. Um, he's going to be a great Pokemon for the team. And I'm very excited for him, especially with uh, the ability with Z moves. I think he's going to be insane with Z moves. We're going to run all sorts of fun stuff on him. And I'm super excited. I'm going to go ahead and show you my next pick. Round two is coming up. Now, this is a snake draft, by the way. So it goes all the way down and then comes back up uh, the reverse. So round two, I was pretty early in and I went and snagged Mega Blastoise. I love Mega Blastoise. Now, I'll explain a little bit of this pick because some people were a little confused of why I went so early. Uh, the first reason I picked it now is because my next pick was like 50 something picks away and I was pretty sure Blastoise wouldn't make it back to me and I really wanted Blastoise a couple reasons one it's one of the my it's my favorite rapid spinner in the game I think it's one of the best rapid spinners um it's really bulky so it can switch into a lot of things rapid spin come back out all that good stuff and he has insane coverage he has dark pulse or a sphere um what are the other moves he gets like water pulse and stuff he gets a lot of moves that get boosted by that mega launcher ability so he's a very good Pokemon to have. Not to mention Scald Burns. I mean, we could run Hydro Pump if we really want to hit something in the mouth. Um, but he can function as a... Uh, like, he can function to hit things really hard with his base 135 uh, special attack. Or he can take hits too, because he's got base 115 and base 120 defenses. So he's absolutely insane in that regard. Um, he gets Dragon Pulse too, so he gets good Dragon Coverage. That's going to be insane. And he also gets... Uh, what else do we get? But anyway, mostly I drafted him because of how good of a Rapid Spinner he was. And last season, I got stuck with Avalug. For a rapid spinner so i was not going to let that happen again i wanted to make sure i got a really good rapid spinner early in the draft just to avoid those problems because uh, a lot of people run their hazards and especially with uh hero being weak to stealth rocks i wanted to make sure i had a good answer every week for that and i think blastoise is going to fill that role quite well now let's go ahead and go to my round three pick and like i said round three was about 50 picks um away from me because it went all the way back up and back down my pick and we went and got Florges. now um, not my favorite fairy, admittedly, not my favorite fairy. I would have liked Clef or something. But, um, all the, all the other fairies, not all the fairies, but, like, the other good fairies had already gone. All the Tapus were gone by this point. And, um, I think Elliot drafted, uh, Clefable already. So, anyway, I think Florges is going to be a great pick, as it's going to act as a cleric for us. It'll be a good, uh, wish passer. It's got aromatherapy, which is going to be insane, really helpful. It's just really bulky. It's got reliable recovery as well. That's really clutch. Um, again, that critical, critical fairy typing is going to be so huge. It stops people from just bringing like Outrage Spam or Draco Meteor Spam. Or it gives me that clean switch into some dragons. And it's so specially bulky. I think it's going to really help out. Really well round out the team. Obviously, it's got that 
Fatal Steel Steel Weakness. Can't really get through Steel types. That's what we got Mega Blastoise for. Mega Blastoise is going to be able to wall those Steel types, and throw off Scalds and stuff and whatnot. But I think Forges is going to work pretty well for us. Um, I think it'll do pretty well in the season. I don't know if I'll have to bring it every week. But again, it, and it also starts the wheels for a uh, Fairy Dragon Steel Core. And you'll see in my next pick that I went with freaking Fortress. If I could freaking, there, we, there it is. We went with Fortress. I love Fortress. Um, Fortress is going to be insane. Not only does it give me another Rapid Spinner, but it gives me Hazard Stacking. It gives me Stealth Rocks. It gives me a uh, good uh, Pivot, like in Volt Switch. Uh, Gyro Ball is also really good on Fortress because of how slow it is. But I think Fortress is a really good pick. And it also rounds out my Fairy Dragon Steel Core within the first four rounds so i'm pretty excited about that uh, but like i said uh the only thing that's not very great about fortress is that four times fire weakness but we also got blastoise here that'll help us uh work that out a little bit anyway so not much else to say about fortress it's gonna do what it's gonna do again stealth rocks uh hazard stacking rapid spinning pretty much what it does it's also got uh, access to a reflect and light screen so that's pretty cool we could run that one week so i'm super stoked about that it's also got that sturdy ability which is pretty clutch Let's go ahead and go to round five. Round five, one of my favorite picks in the draft is Galvantula. I've never used Galvantula on YouTube, but I've used it in a couple of other leagues, and it's so, such a good mon. Okay, so one, obviously, Sticky Webs. Sticky Webs is going to be so clutch this year, especially with a Pokemon like Kieran Black that just barely doesn't outspeed things. And uh, Sticky Webs is going to take the pressure off Kieran Black to be speed invested. We might be able to invest more of those EVs into, like, bulk or something. So I'm super excited for uh, Galvantula here. But not only, Galvantula doesn't only have to run Sticky Webs, you know. I mean, I could run uh, Choice Specs, Thunder or something because it has the compound eyes. So, I mean, it can hit stuff hard too. It's got a respectable base. Like, I think it's like 97 special attack. But anyway, another good part about Galvantula is its speed. Base 108 speed. So, it's going to be so good. Really good speed tier. You definitely want things over like 100. Um, if we can beat Garchomp with it because it's 10, I think Garchomp's 102. So anyway, we'll outspeed Garchomp with that. So that's really important. Anyway, so like I said, it outspeeds those base 100s. And that's really, really important for this draft. Because as you can see, I'm drafting a bit of a slower team at this point. Hero Black was my fastest pick at base 95. So I think uh, drafting Galvancho was really important. Because it takes a lot of the pressure off my slow team. And allows me to kind of um, worry about other things than just not outspeeding. So I think Galvancho was a great pick. And like I said, Volt Switch, Thunder, Bug Buzz. It gets Giga Drain 2 or Giga Drain and Energy Ball. I think it's going to be a great pick. Let's go ahead and go to our round six pick. Now, before I show you my round six pick, I'll explain. Um, in every draft league I do, I love to have a hard hitting fire type. I think they're so important. You want something just to spam fire type moves because there are so few switch ins for hard fire type moves. Now, I wanted Entei. So when round six started, Entei was still on the board and I wanted Entei. And then I think Dumb Nexus picked it. So that was like a real, that was a true snipe. I really wanted Entei. But anyway, this guy was still on the board and I am proud to welcome in Embor the God to the team. I love Embor, man. We got that reckless uh, flare blitz attack. It's going to be, oh my God, dude. Uh, show me your switch-ins for an Embor. Your water types aren't safe because he's got wild charge. Your flying types aren't safe because he's got stone edge. He's got super power for his fighting coverage. I wish he had close combat. That would actually be insane. But I think Embor is going to be an insane pick. Base 123 attack. Again, another slow Pokemon, but that's okay because we got sticky webs. He's going to help out a ton gonna help out a ton and we also get access to priority and sucker punch which is pretty clutch i think that'll be useful sometimes um he even gets will-o-wisp that could be useful too uh, i think he's just gonna be a great pokemon like i said hard hitting fire types are really good in league format i just like them a lot i wanted entei but m is gonna do the battle quite well and again it takes um it'll really hit those steel types hard that floor just can't and once i get the steel types out of the way floor just might be able to set up and win so that's another good uh good aspect of it and now here's one of my favorite picks of the draft and we got tornadus i have no idea how tornadus incarnate was still on the board i think he gets overlooked because of tornadus therian but Tor tornadus incarnate is insane base 111 speed base 115 attack and base like 125 for special attack he's going to be insane he's got coverage out the wazoo he's basically got every type covered especially with z moves allowed i think tornadus is going to put in loads of work now now the two things that make tornadus super important are its abilities it's got prankster and defiant now, with my next pick, you'll see uh, why Defiance is important, and I'll explain that after I show you the next pick. But Prankster is going to be huge, too, because it's got Prankster Tailwind, and that's more speed control for my slower draft, and I think that's going to be very, very clutch. Um, like I said, um, he gets good coverage. He has that really good base speed tier of base 111, so I am 
I think this is one of my favorite picks of the draft. I have no idea how it made it this far. And let's go ahead and show you my round eight pick in Gertrude the Spirit Tomb. Gertrude is coming home, guys. Now, if you guys were here with me last season, I had Gertrude on the team that I took over. And I loved it, man. I loved Gertrude so much. It put in so much work. People just didn't... I think it actually picked up four kills on this, uh, the future NPA champion in St. Vampanese. I got four kills the Spirit Tomb. It's insane. People don't. People aren't ready for Spirit Tomb. Okay, guys. So I can run, um, it's move pool isn't that great, like, uh, diversity wise, but it's got, it does what it does really well. It's only weak to fairy, which, um, I mean, I guess it's kind of an issue with my team, but I have a couple switch to fairy types, so I'm not too concerned about that, but Spirit Tomb is actually insane. Um, it can run a very, a couple different sets. It can just be, uh, it can set up, it can, I don't know, it gets priority in Shadow Seek and Sucker Punch, so sometimes you get some guessing games with that. Gets Calm Mind, Nasty Plot. Uh, when I played A Drive, I went Nasty Plot turn one, and he had no switch ins and it got a kill right away. The Spirit Tomb is insane. It's going to put in a lot of work. But most importantly, it is a spin blocker, guys. If I'm going to be relying on Sticky Webs a lot for a Kiron Black, I'm going to want to make sure they can't spin them away. And that's going to, that's like a main reason I like Spirit Tomb, is the fact that it does serve that role really well. And that also goes back to uh, why I picked Tornadus. It gets that Defiant. That also punishes defog users, so if a person wants to bring defog against me, they have to be really careful because if I switch in Tornadus to a defog user, I'm going to be plus two attack, and now I'm going to start hitting things like an absolute truck. So I think this is really good synergy between my team. It also allows me to uh, run hazard stacking a lot with Fortress. So I think um, what I'm working out here is like a nice hazard stacking team. We got some good speed control, and we got our heavy hitters like Embor and Kiron Black. I think we're gonna, I think we're building out quite a nice team. Now I'm going to go ahead and move on to my next pick. Let's go. We got where I think we're in round nine. Yeah, round nine. We pick Cradilly. Not wild about my Cradilly pick. Um, it gives me that grass type that I wanted. It also has a uh, storm drain, which is really good because it's like a free scald switch in because I mean it stops people from uh, spamming scald because I can just switch in and whatnot. Um, Cradilly is kind of cool. I mean, it's kind of like a, a stally mon, so I don't really play stall too much, but Cradilly is a decent mon. Not, uh, not afraid to bring it. Uh, definitely not a mon you bring every week, but the weeks you do bring it, I think it'll put in a lot of work. But like I said, it's got that really important grass typing, which could be useful some weeks. Um, not much else to say. I mean, it's another Stealth Rock user too, so that's always nice. Let's go ahead and go to our round 10 pick. Now, this one hurts, guys. This one really hurts. I want to let you know I tried to go for the mascot pick, but Insane Vampanese sniped me. So I went with his big brother, Rhyperior. I was going to draft right on this round as my tier 5, but since it got picked, I went with Rhyperior instead. I actually think I like that better, because with Rhydon, you're kind of going to run Eviolite every week. But with Rhyperior... I can run all sorts of different items. I can run Choice Band. I can run Assault Vest. I can run a Z move. I can run Leftovers. I don't know. It can be all sorts of stuff. And like I said, another Stealth Rocker, guys. It's so important to have different Stealth Rockers so that way your opponent can't really predict what you're going to bring as far as your Stealth Rocker goes. That was another thing. I wanted to fill the roles and then I wanted to make sure I had backup to those roles in case they couldn't come that week. So, like, say, um, let's go with, uh, who's my other? Say Credilly was like my only Stealth Rock or Forge was my only Stealth Rock user. But they had, like, uh, Entei or something. Like, mons that I just can't bring Fortress to. Now I can bring Rhyperior instead as my Stealth Rocker. So that's really clutch. I'm very happy with the Rhyperior pick. He hits, like, an absolute monster. His, again, his base speed is really low. Um, I think it's, like, 40. It's really slow. But that doesn't matter. We can run Rock Polish sets. We can run Swords Dance sets. We can run Dual Dance sets. It's insane. Rhyperior can do a lot of work. I'm excited to see what it does this season. Now let's go ahead and discuss our round 11 pick, our last pick for the NPA Season 3 draft. And um, there wasn't too much on the board in Tier 5 that I wanted. So I went with the homie. Hold on. There it is. Combuskin. Combuskin's going to be pretty cool. Um, the problem with Combuskin is that it does double up on my fire fighting typing. But I'm not too worried about it because they don't fill the same role. Combuskin isn't going to do the same stuff as Embor is. But what's cool about Combuskin is I am allowed to pa baton pass speed. So that's going to be really cool. So um, say I can I don't know, run Protect, get the plus one speed, and then baton pass that into Kirim. I think that's going to be absolutely insane i think that's going to be a great uh more synergy again more speed control just that kind of stuff and he doesn't even need to baton pass the speed he's got base 85 attack i could run like swords dance on this thing and get like speed boost swords dance uh nonsense in there i think a bus can, can put a little bit of work is it going to be a mod i bring every week no but it does fill that niche role that i think could be pretty important anyway guys that's the last pick of the npa season three draft and here is the final squad guys uh, yes, I photoshopped this myself. That's why it's not the greatest. But look at the team. I'm really happy with it. I think Kieran Black is going to put in the most amount of work this season, especially with the coverage we built around it with Tornadus and Galvantula. Even Combuskin can help it out a little bit. I think we're going to have a great season, guys. Um, if you're if you're going to support your Rochester Ride-Ons, make sure you leave a like. 
and uh, comment below who your favorite member of the team is. Like I said, I'm rooting for Yakira and Black to pick up at least... Oh, I don't even know. I think it's going to pick up at least like 10 kills or something ridiculous. I think Kieran Black is going to put in a lot of work. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for being here. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And uh, the first battle goes up Saturday the 18th against Galactic Elliot and his monster squad. So it's going to be insane, guys. I'm going to get the hell out of here, and I hope you all have a great day. Peace! Peace.